how to add a shadow in Affinity Photo to a shape or image or anything. Let's just remove that. And let's just go over and go to shape. I'm going with a triangle. So a triangle, just create that. With that, you can now go to the Layers panel. And you can find that in the Window menu. Just down here, Effects, that's the thing. As long as it's selected, that's the key thing, make sure it's selected. You can then click Effects. So click there. By default, there's no shadow. There's very little, actually. So what you need to do is go down here, click there, make certain that's highlighted. That's the key thing. And then go over here to the layer effects. Multiply. Now you can change this. You can go to this. Obviously, at the moment, there's nothing there. So go to radius and increase that. And as you do that, you'll see what happens. It's got a nice blurry shadow. It's just behind the shape, just looking straight down behind the shape. There's no offset. There's nothing moved. And you'll notice the second is offset. You can go to offset and you can just move that. And that will just shove it down that way. 100. So it's just going 100 pixels. Now, this 100 pixels is not the limit. You can set it to 300 or 400 and it will offset even more. You can also modify the opacity so you can see it a bit better. But it's still just going in one direction. You might not want that. So you can change the angle. The moment it's 315. What you do, just go there, just click around and you'll see what happens. It just goes from 90 to 45, etc. to zero. Not particularly easy to control. Hold down the Ultra Option key, and that's on the keyboard, and then it will move around smoothly. So you can see it move around, and you can see the shadow will change position. Offset stays exactly the same. What you can also do is you can go down here to Offset Tool. Just click that, and then you can then reposition it just on the screen. You're not actually touching the shape, so you're just moving around back and forth. You might decide, I want the shadow down there. And once you're happy with that, close. You might then decide, oh, you know what? I don't want it to be black. If you want to change it at any time, simply just go here. Just click Effects, and this will pop up again. You can change the color, so you can go, oh, you know what? I want red, and you can see now you've got red. Now, this is applied to the green. The reason being it's black is because you've got Multiply there. So if you want, you can change that. So you can go dark and, or maybe go with normal. So if you want normal, you want that red shadow. You've got a red shadow simply by just going for normal. Now you can also go through and you go for difference. You'll get a yellow or orangey shadow. You can also go for negation, etc. Run through them. Now, if you modify the shape, the shape here will also change. The shadow shape will change as well. Also, what you can do, you can add additional shadows. So you might decide I've got, you know, different light sources. So you've got it going one way and you've got another direction. Well, what you can do, just go over here and there's a little plus. Now you can also remove as well. There's another option here. So you can just delete it. So if you don't want it, just delete it. Just click there to delete it. But you go plus to duplicate that effect. It's exactly the same effect. So by default, it just creates yet another shadow. It will obviously just slightly be more intense then. Now what you can do, they're independent, so you can just go over here to offset and you can click there again and then move it around so you can put it on the other side, say. Also, they're independent again, so you can just go over here and maybe make it blue instead. Or maybe go for change the opacity or radius. You can just change all the settings or offset so it's got a completely different look to this show. Now you can also click color and you'll notice you've also got noise. So you might decide, you know what? I want a slight bit of noise coming in to the shadow as well. Well, you can do that simply by just dragging this, just push all the way up to 100, and you can see now you've got a bit of noise in that shadow as well. You might not want that. If you don't want it, simply just reduce it down back to zero. With this, you can now close it. And you've got this lovely shadow effect. Now, if you create another shape, let's just create another shape. It could be any shape, maybe a rectangle. Is a rectangle, you can maybe change the color, all those sorts of things, maybe do that. And you think, I want those shadows to also be added to that one. Well, you can go here, you can also go to Window, and you can go down to Styles. And you can save this. You can save this style. This shadow and that shadow will all be added. So just go over here, right side, and you can click here, 
an add style from selection. And that one you can see I've already got some styles already. You can add obviously loads and loads of different styles, which can then be really quickly applied again. And you can also rename, etc. So add style from selection, and there it is added there. And again, if you want to create another shape, you've got this one here. You can just go here to style 18 and again just, just click there. And you can see now it's applied. Another option, which is maybe slightly quicker, let's just close this panel. With this shape selected, just go up to edit and copy. Then go back to this one and then go to edit and don't use paste, but use paste style. So it doesn't paste the color or the shape, etc. It just pastes the style. So paste style. And there it is. You've got your blue and you've got your red there. It's exactly the same now as the other one. Now you can also, at any point, select both of them. Just click there. Makes them both selected. That's the key thing. And then you can modify them for all the shapes. So you might have 50 shapes there. So you can select all 50 shapes. And then you can go, oh, you know what? I want the same color for that. I want the same radius for that and the same offset for both of them. And then close. So you can manipulate it for all of the shapes. If you want to create a slightly more unusual shadow for your shape, just select the shape and then go to layer and duplicate. Now with the duplicate, you can go down to this, this one, the first one, and then go to effects, simply click effects. And then again, go for outer shadow or another option, go for Gaussian blur. So just click that, make certain that's highlighted and set the radius. And you can push that all the way up to say 68 or 100. Then click close. And now you've got exactly the same as before. You've got a drop shadow. Now at the moment, the color is set to obviously pink, but you can change the color. So you might decide, just click over here and then go and set it to black. You've obviously got that now, but you can also go for say a gradient or maybe go for the swatches and select a different gradient, something like that. Maybe one of those sort of ones to create a more unusual, colorful gradient shadow. I'm just gonna go with just black. But what you can now do with that shape selected, you can simply just move it. So it makes sense you go to the move tool, not create another star. What you can do, just drag it. And now you can reposition it. So you've got your shadow going off that direction or that direction. Now the key thing about this is you can still change it. So you can always just click effects, go to the Gaussian blur, and you can just maybe increase it or reduce it. So you don't want as obviously as intense a blur. You can also do exactly the same as before. You can add an outer shadow to that as well. So just click there, outer shadow, and you can create, say, a radius, offset, exactly the same as before, intensity, change your angle. You can see as you do that, you can create, again, a slightly more unusual combination of one shadow and a second shadow. And of course, you can add more than one or two shadows. And also you can change the color as well. But I'm just gonna turn that off but with this, what you can do, click close. It's a shape and you can then just transform it. You can go up here and simply just drag it down, squeeze it like that. You can also go here and you can rotate the shadow. You can reposition it and you can go all kinds of different ways of creating your design. And you can also use various things such as filters. Go down here, use colors, modify various things, maybe add a procedural texture. You can also distort it. So distort, go for deform is an option, or maybe mesh warp. So mesh warp. And with mesh warp, you can then manipulate the shadow to create a weird and wonderful distortion for your shadow design. And of course, you can just tweak it like that and then click apply. Another option, let's just undo that, is that you can use layer and go down to new life filter layer. You've got blurs there. You've also got distort and you've got mesh warp. And now if you use this option, it's a live effect. And a live effect means you can go and alter it at any time. So just go there and you can see you've got exactly the same thing. You can modify and drag this down, drag this down. You can tweak this, move this, 
right, all go. It's still the star and done. And you can go back to it. So just go over here, click, and you can just edit the live effect. Also, you can go over here, you can move it still. So you can reposition it, say over to there as well. Now, the only issue with this is that the shape obviously are not linked. So if you change the star, if you decide, you know what, I want six or seven points, this star will not change automatically. So let's just go and change it. So go here and say 21 points to change the star. Now, because this is a live effect and you've got the star still active, you can see you've still got access to the points. So just go there and you can push that to 21. If you had used the filter, you wouldn't have been able to do that. But now you can actually modify the number of points as well as the other settings of this star design, as well as other shapes, of course, as well. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Always adding new videos about Affinity Photo. Bye.